What's up guys, welcome back once again to the Gaming Careers YouTube channel. This whole channel is completely dedicated to helping you learn how to live stream and this video really encompasses that um, as we're going to be trying our best to get through 100 live streaming tips in under 10 minutes. Now this idea actually came to me um, at TwitchCon, a fan came and suggested this idea. I think they just watched a video that was similar to do with filmmaking where they tried to cover 100 tips in 10 minutes. So ever since then I've kept a note uh, on my phone where I can jot down all the ideas uh, that I have for these 100 tips. Obviously I'm going to be rattling through these tips at a pretty rapid speed. So if there's anything that you need more context on, uh, be sure to check in the description in case I've expanded on it at all or come into the Gaming Careers Discord and ask as there are plenty of helpful people in there that can point you in the right direction. Just before we jump into the tips, a quick message from today's video sponsor. Nerd or Die make the best free and premium overlays, alerts, widgets and sound effects for your live stream. I've used Nerd or Die for my live stream for years, way before I started the Gaming Careers YouTube channel. You can use the link in the description below as well as the coupon code Gaming Careers for an extra 10% off. So I have absolutely no idea whether or not I'm going to cover these within 10 minutes. You probably do because you're watching the video now, but either way, I will have a timer in one of these bottom corners uh, to keep track of how long it has taken me to get through the 100 tips. So without further ado, let's get started. Create a private second account on your streaming platform and test stream to that account before you go live. Just recording as a test isn't enough as you won't be testing your internet connection. The closer your mic can be to your mouth, the better. This can help eliminate keyboard and background noise. You can set up automatic profiles on your stream deck so that different profiles get shown when certain applications are open. If you use a webcam, make sure you are lit well. All cameras and webcams perform much better with more light. Make sure to have some water nearby you when streaming. It's really important to stay hydrated. Set up a limiter for your microphone in your streaming software so that even if you scream or shout, your audio doesn't peak and distort. Write down a plan before you go live. What games are you going to play and what stories are you going to tell? It's important to make sure that you have things to talk about in case your chat aren't interacting. Watch some other streamers of all sizes and ask yourself what are they doing differently and what can you incorporate into your stream yourself. Spend some time after your stream creating clips and highlights of the best bits that you can share on social media for the following days. Ask some other streamers who you are friends with for some constructive criticism on your stream. It's important to get feedback from those who are in the industry. Watch back your own streams with a critical eye. What could be done better? Is it entertaining enough for people to stay? Use stream markers to mark certain times in your live stream that you want to look back on once you've finished. You can do this either from your Twitch dashboard or from a stream deck if you have one. Ask some of your regular viewers if they want to be moderators. They can help with keeping chat as you want it as well as responding to common questions. Set up a chatbot that does some auto moderation for you and can promote your social medias on a timed message. Don't become obsessed with the statistics. Having little to no viewership when you're starting out is completely normal. Focus on instead learning and becoming a better streamer. Add a cool scene transition between scenes to keep things interesting and show some branding. You can use specific transitions for specific scenes. If you only have one monitor, then you can use the Restream Chat application to overlay your chat on top of your game so that you can keep up. Try and reduce as many background noises as you can. Close windows, turn off noisy fans and use a quieter mechanical keyboard. You should be constantly keeping an eye on your stream info while streaming. Nobody likes a stream that is dropping frames constantly. Add alerts for followers, subscribers and donations to encourage your viewers to interact with you. <coughs> Nerd or die. <coughs> Start your stream with a countdown or a stream starting soon scene to gather your viewers in anticipation. Just don't leave it for more than 5 minutes as nobody likes to wait for ages. Add your Twitch chat as an overlay to your intermission scene between games. People love seeing their names on screen. Use the Twitch inspector to solve your stream issues without actually having to go live to your audience. Use Twitch Strike to find games that aren't overly saturated yet still have a decent enough viewer base for you to grow. Use a noise gate within your streaming software to completely silence your mic when you aren't talking. Set some realistic goals for yourself that you want to achieve each week, month and year. Don't make these goals number specific but things that will actually help. Try out some of the different streaming software available, even if it's just for 20 minutes. We now live in a world with multiple options for streaming, OBS, Slobs, OBS Live and XSplit and you might find something that you like. Group your webcam and webcam overlay sources together so that moving and resizing them becomes easy. Avoid the red part of the mixer. If things are hitting that, then you need to turn them down. 
your voice should be in the orange section and all the other sounds should be in the green. You can move sources up and down in the sources list using control up and control down or you can move things to the top or the bottom of the list using control home or control end. Control F will automatically scale a source to fill the full screen. Control D centers a source in the very middle of the screen. You can then use the up, down, left and right arrows to fine tune its position. You can hold down the alt key and drag in the bounding box to crop a source. You can hold down the control key to temporarily disable source snapping, which allows more precise positioning. If you find yourself dropping frames, that means that you haven't got a stable connection to the server you're streaming to. This usually means that you can't keep up with the bitrate that you've set, so try lowering the bitrate. Make sure your camera and audio are in sync with each other. The easiest way to test this is to clap in frame. If things need changing, you'll either need to delay your video or delay your audio using the sync offsets. For capturing games, use game capture whenever you can. The performance hit on your PC will be less than window capture and display capture is usually a pretty bad viewer experience. If you're confused about where to start with your stream settings, run the auto configuration wizard to get a rough starting point. If you are constantly having to swap scenes whenever you get into game, look at using OBS's auto scene switcher plugin to handle this automatically. Twitch might not be the best platform to start on. Consider using a service like Restream to stream to multiple platforms simultaneously whilst starting out. Use a free or cheap overlay when starting out. You can invest more as your stream grows. Socialize and interact with other streamers on Twitter, Twitch and Discord. Making friends in this space is absolutely vital for your growth and your sanity. Use a webcam filter to make your webcam look more cinematic. I have a pack of 30 free filters that you can download from my website. You can unlock and rearrange the layout in OBS to look however you'd like. Customize it to help manage your stream. Use a green screen if you want to isolate yourself from your background. There are plenty of cheap ones available on Amazon. And if you have a fun background where you can display some cool things about your personality, then don't use a green screen. Use Streamlabs face masks or Snapchat lens to add comedic filters to your webcam when somebody donates or subscribes. Stop streaming Fortnite and complaining about little to no growth. There are currently 3,000 people streaming Fortnite. You're only going to make things hard for yourself. Do whatever you can to attend TwitchCon or TwitchCon Europe. It's an absolutely awesome experience and you'll meet loads of like-minded individuals and come back hungrier than ever to stream. Unless you need it for streaming, put your phone aside. Checking your phone or texting every time you're bored is a surefire way to ensure any viewers will be bored too. Tweet out and post in your Discord something interesting before you go live. Try not just to do a generic live tweet, but something a little more engaging. Use a cheap boom arm to get your microphone off your desk and close to your mouth. Use a pop filter on your mic to help prevent P's and B's from peaking your audio. Talk to anyone and everyone who comes into your stream. Even when nobody's there, talk through what you're doing in game. You need to be filling that silence. If you have a newer Nvidia graphics card, experiment with using the NVENC as your encoder. It'll free up your CPU and can help with system performance. Use the Twitch test tool to test your connection to all of the Twitch servers. Select the server with the highest quality and if that matches another server then choose the one with the best bandwidth. Don't go spending thousands of dollars on your streaming setup when you are brand new. That investment can come later on if things go well for you. Instead start by getting a stable live stream. Have a stream schedule. Even if it's just once a week and for two hours, having that schedule where people can know when you'll next be live is key to growth. Make use of the tags when you set your title and game for your live stream on Twitch. You never know what will help somebody discover you. Have some events for your stream. 24 hour charity streams, spicy nut challenges, or even just nights where you play games with your viewers directly. People love an event, just keep it rare enough to actually keep it considered as an event. Enable studio mode if you want to be able to edit a scene whilst you are live. It looks much more professional since you won't be editing the scene that you are displaying to your audience. Set colors for your sources to help you easily identify which is which at a glance. Name your scenes and sources properly. There's nothing worse than not knowing which source is which because you were too lazy when setting it up. You can hide individual sources from a scene by clicking the eye icon. Clicking the lock icon next to a source prevents it from being able to be moved. Assign a hotkey to muting your mic. You'll never know when you need to cough or sneeze and it will help prevent deafening your audience. If you want to record your stream, set the recording type to MKV. Yes, it's super convenient to have MP4, but if anything happens like your PC crashes or your stream crashes, the whole recording will be lost. If you set it to MKV, that means that you'll never lose a recording no matter what happens. And when the recording is done, you can go up to File, Remix Recordings, select the MKV file and the destination, and it will then convert the MKV 
into MP4 so that you can use it in any editing program. Set up multiple profiles to have different settings for different use cases. Do you sometimes use OBS to do something different like to record a tutorial or a podcast maybe? Scene collections are your friend. Collaborate with other streamers. We have a channel dedicated to finding collabs in the Gaming Careers Discord and it's a great way to not only meet other streamers but get exposure to each other's audiences. Add your friends channels to your auto host list. This way Twitch will automatically host them on your channel whenever you aren't live. It's a nice way of sharing the love. Raid another channel when you're ending your stream. It's a cool way of interacting with other streamers and giving your viewers somewhere to go. Browse through the Twitch extension page and find some cool ways to add more functionality to your stream. If you reach affiliate or partner, make some emotes and badges to reward your subs and encourage your viewers to subscribe. Add some seasonality to your stream, so if there's a big national holiday coming up, like Christmas, adding some Christmas lights to your layout can be a nice surprise for your viewers. If you're heading to a convention or a meetup, get some business cards printed for cheap that you can give to people that you've had a good conversation with. Add a live countdown and a schedule to your Twitch panels. You can even use a Twitch extension that will automatically convert your schedule to the viewer's time zone. Have some kind of branding for your stream. Even if it's just as simple as a few colors that you use consistently across your social medias and your stream. Use the Twitch panels editor to add some more information about yourself below your stream. Be interactive and energetic on stream. You're the host of the show so you need to be bringing some kind of value for people to watch. You can skip or replay alerts from either your Streamlabs or Stream Elements dashboard. Enabling text-to-speech for new subscriptions is definitely a way of bringing entertainment to your stream but I'd recommend setting some level of moderation to this to prevent spammy, repetitive messages. If you're gaming with friends on Discord, have a push to mute and a push to deaf and hotkey set up so that you can directly talk with your stream if you want to. Email your subs once in a while, thanking them for the support. Just don't do it so often that you'll be considered spammy. Make sure that you update your stream title and the current game that you're playing each stream. There's nothing worse than your fans expecting you to be playing something that you aren't. When sharing a highlight on Twitter, download it first from your Twitch dashboard and then upload that video file to Twitter, rather than just posting the Twitch clip link. Twitter prioritizes video uploads in tweets over links and they can autoplay, making them more engaging. If you are good and high skilled at a game that you play, tell your viewers exactly what you're thinking in-game and why you're making certain decisions you do. People on Twitch will tune into high school streamers playing the game that they like to learn and improve. Display your social media on stream so people know where they can follow you once your stream is offline. Use animated backgrounds over static ones to keep things interesting as long as your PC is powerful enough to be able to run it while streaming. You can use powerful VST plugins for your audio if you want to delve deep into your microphone setup. Use the NDI plugin for dual PC setups without needing to purchase a capture card. If you can, then put your streaming setup in a carpeted room or use a rug to help to reduce reverberation. Keep things simple. Most people don't want to see a scene with 50 different sources that distract from gameplay. Take a day off if you're not feeling up to it. Tweet something out, I'm sure your fans will understand, and then you can come back to streaming when you're feeling 100%. Use Ethernet, not Wi-Fi, if you're gonna be streaming. Get some exercise before your stream. Not only will you feel more refreshed, you'll also be more focused and generally be in a better mood. Set your expectations. Ninja did not become the number one streamer overnight. He's been streaming for over five years. This is not an easy career path, nor is it a get rich quick scheme. Stick to a game or a sub niche of games if you want to grow. It's much more difficult to grow playing variety. Streaming video games is literally one of the coolest things that you can do. So remember to have fun. So that was it. What oh, was that 99? There's a one more. I guess you better subscribe to Gaming Careers with notifications on. So I have absolutely no idea how long that took overall. It felt like longer than 10 minutes, um, but when I'm cutting it together, uh, maybe I'll just be able to nip under. I don't know. Um, but hopefully there was 100 useful tips in there uh, that you can implement for your live stream. I would just like to say a massive thanks as always to my patrons this month. They help me run this channel full time and without them I absolutely couldn't do it. Uh, so massive thanks to my patrons. If you would like to consider supporting the channel then do head over to my Patreon page and consider supporting. And subscribers, I will see you in the next video. Peace.